Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. I'm Eddie, your host. You're watching The Dean Show. And we're getting into Ramadan, fifth pillar of Islam. Islam's submission to the Creator, not the creation. The way of life of all the messages of God. The belief in only one God. Just one God. All the prophets, they fasted, they prayed, and they worshipped the way Muslims worship because they were Muslim. And now you're a Muslim. Now you're one who submitted to the will of God. And you want to do things the right way, not the wrong way. And Ramadan has come around. You want to know some of the benefits, the wisdoms, and how to fast. How to start the day, how to end the day with the fast. And get all the wonderful rewards so you can be in paradise. So we're going to be talking about that. We want to improve our character. We want to improve our situation with our Creator. We want to become more God conscious. And fasting is one of those ways, those means to achieve the ultimate success. So we have a former Buddhist who's now an Islamic scholar, who's with us all the way from Malaysia, Sheikh Hussein Yee here at the Dean Show, when we come back talking about Ramadan. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is the Dean Show. 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 And welcome back to the Dean Show. And with us all the way from Malaysia, my good friend and our Sheikh Hussein Yi. Sheikh Hussein Yi, how are you? Alhamdulillah, brother Adi. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much for being. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for being with us here. We're going to be getting into Ramadan, and we thought it'd be a great, great time with you that we can talk with you and kind of get in that Ramadan spirit that many of us you know are looking forward to can you tell us now the significance for those now that are some of the new timers to Islam they just accepted Islam and some of the old timers what is the spirit of Ramadan what is it so significant about this month Ramadan of Ramadan Bismillah alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'i wa ba'du. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To all the weavers and all the brothers and sisters. We all as Muslims are aware that the best month for all the Muslims in the year is Ramadan al-Mubarak. Now why Ramadan is so special, number one? Because Allah said so. Because Allah revealed in Torah also in the month of Ramadan. Allah revealed Zabur, palms to the Prophet David alayhi salam, also in the month of Ramadan. And also Injil was revealed in Ramadan. And the last testament of the Quran was also revealed in the same month. So all the holy scripture, the heavenly books, as a guidance to all of us, was revealed in the same month. And Allah said in the holy Quran, Ya yuhallazina amanu, now, based on this ayah, Brother Adi, Allah is telling us, especially those who believe in Him, who call themselves as believer, He said, O oh, you who believe, I have made fasting an obligation upon all of you, like how it was made as an obligation upon the early nation before you. Now, what is the significance? Why Allah want us to fast? To torture us? No, to make us suffer, no food, no dream, the daytime? No. Allah loves us so much. And He knows what is best for us, our body, our mind, and our soul. And that's why Allah said, The reason He want us to fast so that at the end of the day, our taqwa will increase. We will attain piety, inshallah. We will become a better person, not an old you, but a new you, inshallah. Now, the reason also Allah wants us to fast is to give us the opportunity to gain control on our nafs, our desire. All of the human desire is always very destructive. And Allah knows best because He is the Creator. So when He wants you to fast, He is to train you, to remind you the importance to have control to yourself. 
So that now you be the master of your desire, not the desire be your master. You will, you will dictate the desire to do what that please Allah. You don't become the follower of desires. So, and also, uh, Brother Eddie, I'd like to share with all the brothers and sisters then. When you look at Islam as a way of life, you will be very amazed how Allah perfected his religion compared with the early religion where other religions also have fasting. But if you ask them, how do you fast? They have no clue about it. When do you fast? How many days you fast in a year? What do you do when you fast? From what time to what time you fast? They have no clue at all. But in Islam, Allahu Akbar, when Allah wants us to do something, He chose the month. And the month is Ramadan al-Mubarak. Not any month. There is fard. There is an obligation fast. Not the optional fast. Yes. He chose the month. And then He fixed the days. Ayyamu ma'adu that. Yes. You see, the day is fixed by Allah, not more than 30 days and not less than 29 days. And He fixed the time, Allah, Akbar, that the beginning of the fast is before sunrise and it will end at sunset. Now, you don't have any other deen in the world today who have disciplined the ummah in this manner. That when you need to do something for Allah, you have to do in the way Allah has set for us. To discipline ourselves. To make sure that we become people of discipline. So when you asked me earlier about how about the born Muslim or old Muslim or the new Muslim, yeah, when fasting is concerned, we encourage everyone to try the level best to do what they can. For the born Muslim, I think it's very common because they were trained from young. For the new brothers and sisters, because it's something new for them, they may go, they may have some problem in the beginning. But through my humble experience, the day I became a Muslim in 1968, and the first year I learned how to fast, Alhamdulillah, it was Amazing, it was so good. I feel good. Physically, mentally, and spiritually, I feel so good. I feel that now I am in control of my desire. And there are a lot of people who are not yet Muslim, they have been fasting. Those who attend my class from time to time, when I ask them, have you all tried fasting before? They say, oh yeah, we have been fasting. Maybe they say, we tried three days first. Alhamdulillah, they feel wonderful. They feel more healthier. So we believe that it is not a problem if they have the belief. And that's why Allah start this ayah with Ya Yuhallazina Amano, O you who believe. For the believer, I don't think there is any issue about fasting. But if they don't believe, they still can try, even for an hour, three hours, Alhamdulillah, they try their best. I always encourage them, try your level best. And we know Allah has said, La yukallif Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. Allah will never burden a soul except what they can do. So we believe, inshallah, it will be benefit for everybody. We're going to go to break in a, in a minute, but tell us, so this is the same way of life. I mean, Jesus fasted, Moses, they all worshipped the Creator, not the creation. And this is the same tradition in the line of all the prophets that the Creator sent to guide humanity with? Nothing yes, new. of course. It's what Allah said. And you look in the Old Testament, you look in Psalms of David, uh, Psalms of David, and you look into Injil, the New Testament, talking about fasting. Even if you look in Hinduism, they do have fast. You do in Buddhism, they have fast. Everyone have this kind of act of worship. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So we're continuing that same tradition, nothing new, the same way of life that was with all the messengers. And it's, time, it's that time of the year, Ramadan, and we're with Sheikh Hussein Yi, and we're going to be back with more discussing the Ramadan 
and how to get into it the right way. We're going to be answering some, having some answers, some more questions. Here on the Dean Show, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Hussein Yee, all the way in from Malaysia. How's everything in Malaysia, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Malaysia is welcoming everyone to visit Malaysia years. This year is also visiting Malaysia years. Now, so Malaysia is wonderful, Alhamdulillah. Now, we, we also did a show with one of your students. Um, and it was, a, it was a, 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 a young lady who accepted Islam and, you know, she's a, a new Muslim. Now, gearing towards the new Muslims, now tell us, someone, let's say, took Shahada two weeks ago, you know, six months ago, and now the fasting. You know, this is totally new to them. So let's get into what, what you would advise. You, you mentioned something, do as much as you can. We want to encourage them. Should they start, should they wait for next year as they gain more knowledge? Or should they just jump into us? Talk to us, Sheikh. Nam, alhamdulillah. I mean, as a Muslim, of course, we will motivate them. We will encourage them to do what Allah wants them to do. But so far, through my humble experience, all the people who became a Muslim, even just one week before Ramadan, when I motivate them, Alhamdulillah, they're ready for Ramadan. But I also warn them, if you feel that you can't do it, then you just do your level best and Allah know what we can do for Him. And Allah will accept whatever single deeds that we do purely for Him. The most important thing, Brother Eddie, is to remind all the brothers and sisters even not yet Muslim, they ask me, can I fast? I say, why not? And then at the end of the day, because the sincerity is there. Now, I believe the power of Ramadan also rely on our sincerity. If you are sincere, nothing that you can say, I can't do it. For the sake of Allah, inshallah. So through my humble experience, when I talk to the rivers, they have no problem. And if those who have problem, then we say, no problem. Still to us, it's no problem. Why? Because we say, let us learn more about fasting. Now, the, come, the past Ramadan example, we have guests from France. We have guests from, from uh, Germany. You know? And also, we have guests from other countries who want to practice Salat al Qiyam Ramadan with us. They are not here to fast but they want to participate in the Qiyam Ramadan, known as the Traweh prayer. And they follow us for two hours. Allahu Akbar, walillahi alham. And as the after that, I asked them, brothers, sisters, you know, how do you feel? They feel good, they say. Now they feel close to God. Alhamdulillah, I mean, fasting, like I said earlier, is not just something that is only made obligatory to Muslim today is a deed, an act of worship for all the believers. So I will agree with you too, Brother Eddie, whoever is new to Islam, we cannot force them. We just have to motivate them, encourage them, guide them, and Alhamdulillah, they will be able to go through the fasting month. What have you seen some of the benefits and, and wisdoms of, of fasting? You mentioned that, you know, this gets you closer to God. Are there, um, there's obviously spiritual benefits, health benefits. You know, can we talk about some of these uh, spiritual and uh, benefits and what, what uh, wisdoms can we derive from the fast? Oh, yes. If you look at the whole concept of fasting, even our prophet have said, the prophet did say, Kam min sa'im, laysa lahu min sawmihi illa ju'wal atas, meaning, how many people who have been fasting and what do they gain? What do they profit from their fasting? Nothing except hunger and thirst. Why? Because fasting is not just abstaining from food and drink, but it's a kind of self-control. 
yeah, a self kind of self esteem kind of of exercise to train ourselves to have control to our inner self yeah, so that inshallah we can be a very patient person when we encounter any trial from Allah Rabbul Alameen. And fasting will increase the wisdom in our life. Our health, inshallah, will increase. Even scientists today have confirmed that if you fast three days in a month, it's a sunnah, three days in a month, you will rebuild new cell in your body, a healthy cell that can fight against all the bad cells in the body. Scientists are saying this. Yes, yeah, scientists yeah, are saying yeah, that. Amazing, amazing. Now, sometimes what Allah and the Prophet want us to do, we may not understand the significant before. Yeah, but Allah, the Creator who created all of us, He knows what is best for us. He's not here to torture us, no. He's here to save us. He wants us to live in this world yeah, in health. He wants us to be healthy. So when your body is healthy, inshallah, you have a healthy mind and you have a healthy spirit. And that's why you see people who fast, they become more humble. They become very careful in their speech because you are not supposed to bad bite, to lie, to talk bad about anybody while you are fasting. If a person still lie and cheat, and use bad word and curse people in the month of Ramadan, meaning he have missed all the significance of fasting. Because fasting is here to train you to have self-control. You control your speech, you control your hearing, you control your sight, you control your mind. Everything is under control. Tell us, tell us Sheikh, now we, we see that uh, it's pretty easy to understand, you know, can you give us a breakdown for the person who, again, who's new and they haven't read much on it, but now they're watching the Dean Show and they're motivated. They're listening to you. They say, yes, I want to get closer to my Creator. Yes, I want to become more humble and patient. I want to start tomorrow, but they want to do it the right way. And this is the information that's coming to them through the Dean Show. Can you tell us how would they start the day? How would they end the day? How would they start the fast, break the fast? Talk to us, Sheikh, please. And now, I think... Uh, the best thing for us to do is to make sure that our intention is clear purely for the sake of Allah. Because the Prophet said, And even Allah said, That whatever you do for the sake of Allah, make sure that your intention is purely for the sake of God. That's number one. There is a drive. When you do everything purely for the sake of Allah, then the istiqamah will come in, the consistency will come in. So you don't feel the burden anymore, inshallah. You know the overeating kill you. A lot of people die in my country, it's not because they have no food, overeating. So fasting actually will improve your good self, your health, and also will give you new spirit, new energy. You can experience new aura while you are fasting. Because fasting is not just that I said, like I said earlier, just abstain from food and drink. You must make sure that you don't use your ear to listen at things that do not benefit you anymore. You do not use your eye to see things that do not benefit you. You do not say anything that do not benefit you. That everything you want to do now, you are making sure that it is something that brings benefit to you and benefit to others. And also fasting will give you a lot of opportunity to reflect about yourself, about how to be kind to yourself. And the Prophet said, well, nafsika alayka haqqa. Yourself have right upon you. Your body have right upon you. So we do believe for all the new brothers and sisters, I say that if your intention is correct, then inshallah, you don't have problem in the fast. Then after you have the good intention, make sure that Fasting also is a month for you to reflect, for you to read the book of God because Allah revealed the Quran. The beginning of the revelation is in Ramadan. So you must start to open the book of Allah and read at least 10 ayah per day, if possible. And go to the meaning, my Allah, brother and sister. At the end of the day, you will find the treasure and all the good 
guidance that Allah have prepared for us in the Holy Quran. It will really make you a different person after that. We're going to take a break, Sheikh, and we'll be right back to ask you a few more questions before we conclude on this session with Sheikh Hussein Yi, all the way from Malaysia, talking about Ramadan here on the Dean Show. We'll be right back. It's simple to understand. Islam means submission. Look at the word. Submission not to yourself, not to your desires, not to anyone or anything. Because at the end of the day, you get something, you always want more. You get some weed, you want more. You get some drugs, you want harder drugs. You get a girl, you want a nicer girl. You get a car, you want a nicer car. You get a house, you want a nicer house. We've got so many pressures by enslaving yourself, worshipping God, loving God. But submission to the one who created you. And by worshipping God and seeking His pleasure, you get pleased and you enter paradise. God bless you. Word can't have defects in it, can it? If it is literally God's word, yes, it cannot have defects. I mean, but this was written by men. We yes. know that this is a collection, right? Even if you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel according to according to right. Um, the, the thing about the Quran and the biggest and, and you know I'll leave you with this is the biggest thing for me is if the Quran is exactly what it says it is. And this doesn't matter whether you're Muslim or not. If the Quran is what it says it is, the Quran is literally the word of God, delivered via Gabriel to Muhammad, who was an unlettered man who couldn't read or write, right? And he was just told to recite, right? That was the first thing, right? First thing he was told, Absolutely, recite, yes. right? Um, so if it is literally the word of God, then that's pretty important to me. And, and before I became Muslim, I said, if this is the word of God, then I'm going to follow it because I'd be stupid not to. Back here on the D show with Sheikh Hussein Yi, we're talking about one of the pillars of Islam. Islam, submission to the creator, not the creation. And you want peace in life, that's right. So you do Islam. That's the way of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, all the messengers of God. They believed in one God. They worshiped one God. They didn't worship the creation. They worshiped the creator. And they fasted. That's right. They prayed like Muslims pray because a Muslim is one who submits to the will of God. Not to the creation, but to the creator. Not a stick, not a stone, not a man, not a woman. Nothing but the one who created you. That's right. And the creator called us to fast. So we're talking about Ramadan. It's that time of the year, Sheikh. So bef before we went to break, if you could finish off telling us now how does someone uh, start the day uh, before the break of down and then how do, when do they break the fast? Yes, Alhamdulillah. Now, it is very important for everybody who want to start fasting to follow the Sunnah of the Prophet The way of our beloved Messenger of Allah Rabbul Alameen was sent as the last messenger to humanity, not only to a particular tribe or a particular nation. Now, the Prophet reminds his Ummah, whoever had the intention to fast, make sure that they don't miss their sahur. What is sahur? Saho is the pre-dawn meal. That means you should have some food before you start to fast. And the Prophet even said that, Fi sahur barka. At that point of time, the pre-dawn meal, there's a lot of blessing. This makes us different from the other people of the book. They do fast, but they don't wake up for their sahur. Now, sahur is one of the things that the Prophet wants us to do before you start fasting. Now, while you are fasting, of course, if you, if you wake up for sahur, inshallah, you will never miss your morning prayer. So, sahur is not 12 midnight. The best time for sahur is around 20 minutes before the beginning of fast, before Azan al-Fajr. 20 minutes. That will be the best time for sahur, not earlier than that. Yeah? And then, you start to perform your prayer, Fajr prayer, the morning prayer. Then if you feel very tired, you can take a break because we know fasting month, there are more activities at night than in the daytime. 
So the daytime, you may take a break of a while and then you have to start your new life again. Yeah, If you are working, you have to carry on with your normal work. You must remember, fasting man is a proactive man. It's not a man to make us lazy. Sometimes a lot of Muslims give excuses. You know, I'm fasting, so don't push me anymore. Don't call me to carry a heavy thing, you know. I'm not going to work outside the office. I want to be in the aircon. Astaghfirullah. <laughs> fasting is not like that. Fasting is there to boost your spirit, to be more productive. So lunchtime, you used to take a break, you know, for your lunch. Now, lunchtime, you are doing work now. You are doing extra to serve the community, to serve the people. So it's a proactive man. And also make sure that the ending, the ending of fasting, that means before, uh, before um, the, the breaking of fast, or they call it iftar, Make sure that we break our fast following the sunnah of the Prophet. We are not supposed to be so greedy now that we have not been eating 14, 15 hours. Now I'm going to eat everything in one time. No, 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 no. You take time. The Prophet said, iftar. The Prophet now said, dinner. Dinner is after your Maghrib prayer. A lot of people who have been fasting in the daytime 14, 15 hours they have been controlling themselves. The last 15, 10 minutes, they lost control. They want all the food. You now the whole table is full of food. It's like now, now it's time, man. Payback time. I have to eat everything in one shot. No, that is not the way. The sooner of breaking fast is just take some dates, three pieces of date, or if you don't have date, you can take some fruits papaya, banana, something light, something that is soft and something that is easy for your stomach. Because you have not been working, the stomach has not been active for 14, 15, or even in the state, maybe 17, 18 hours, wallahu alam. And suddenly you put all the heavy stuff, you jam up your body, you jam up the system. Be kind to your body. Take some things that are soft and take some drink. That's all. Some dates, or papaya or some fruits and then take some drink and then you're ready for your maghrib meal. And also I would like to advise a lot of people who are fasting, please have your ablution first before you break your fast. Because we have to pray maghrib. If you try to delay, then you're going to delay maghrib. If you eat too much, you have stomach problem, you go to the toilet, you're going to delay the maghrib prayer. So you will enjoy your dinner better after the Margaret prayer. So remember, the iftar is not to have dinner. Dinner in Islam is called Asha. Iftar is not Asha. Iftar is the breaking of fast. And also, be kind. Be kind to help other or offer other people something for them to break their fast too. Because by doing that, you get the full reward from them. And also, i like to add something here. Our Prophet ﷺ did say in one of the Hadith Al-Qudsi, where Allah mentioned in his firman, in his saying, Kullu amala ibn Adam lahu illa sawm as-sawmuli. All the deeds committed by my servant is for him, except fasting. For fasting, I am going to reward him without any limit. Where other deeds, Allah will reward you, every one good deed to 10 until 700 times. Every good deed that we engage in, Allah will reward us from, from 1 to 10 to a maximum of 700. But fasting, Allah said, I will reward you without any limit. Amazing, mashallah. And in the fasting month, whoever passed away in the fasting month is a sign of good ending. Because whoever die fasting for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sure to forgive all his past sin, number one. And Allah will allow him to enter the gate of paradise, known as Arrayan. This gate is specially only for the people who fast. Who die while fasting, Allah Akbar. It is a very beautiful and good sign. There is a good ending. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, now for those who are fasting, there are two happiness. Number one, 
they feel great when they break the fast. Number one. Number two, they feel great when they meet Allah Alamin. So this is part of the significant for people who really fast for the right reason. And that's why the Prophet said, Man soma imanan wahtisaban ghufira lahu matakadda min zambi. Whoever fasts with the right intention, right faith for the sake of Allah and follow all the do and don'ts, Allah will forgive all his passing. He will be like a reborn king. There's a beauty. There's a beauty that the believer will feel and experience. And people who have the right iman and they fast for the right reason, inshallah, inshallah, the sweetness of iman will come into our heart. And you are sure, inshallah, to benefit not only yourself, but your family and also your community. That is how Islam want us to be, not just be good to yourself, but also be good to your family and be good to your neighbor and your community. So it is very important for all of us as Muslims, wherever you are, brothers and sisters. Number one, have the right intention. Number two, don't forget to follow the sunnah of the Prophet. Without following the way of the Prophet, you want to do it in your way. We are worried at the end of the day, you will not get the benefit of fasting. So may Allah guide us, brother and sister, okay. and you can keep on asking scholars for further guidance if you are not sure, that those who are close to you, and they will help you to make sure that the fasting man, this coming fasting man, will be your best fasting man in your lifetime. Shaykh, thank you so much. We're out of time. Thank you so much. May you have a blessed Ramadan. May Allah accept your Ramadan and bless you and every, everyone down there in Malaysia. Thank you so much for being with us. Jazakallah khair. Uh, Allah you barak you brother. So my good salam to all the brothers and sisters where they are. And whoever is following the Deen show, may Allah benefit all of you. May Allah make you a better person after following the Deen show inshallah. But that be, Alhamdulillah. You look good. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Thank you so much. Be good always inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that was Sheikh Husseini all the way from Malaysia. Sheikh, thank you so much for being with us here on The Dean Show. So just to recap, Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. The first pillar is to testify that there's no one or nothing worthy of worship except your maker, the one who made you, the one who you're going to return back to, the one who created Jesus, Moses, the universe, the seven seas, the bees, the one who's running this universe, the one God. That's the one that you worship. And you accept Muhammad, peace be upon him who was a brother to Jesus, Moses, Abraham, you accept him as the last and final messenger, and automatically you include all his brothers, the ones that I, prophets I just mentioned, Jesus being one of them. And then you establish the prayer five times a day, and one of the other pillars is the Ramadan, which we're in now. So a great way to achieve God consciousness, to help you in your moral and your character development is the fasting. And also, nowadays, we're seeing science is showing that there are tremendous benefits for your body, not just your soul, but your mental state, your physical state, your internal state, through fasting. Look it up. And this is a wisdom that comes from the Creator, the one who created us. He knows best. He knows what we need, so He's ordained this. So make sure that you're benefiting tremendously from this month, Ramadan, so we can get a jump start for the rest of the year. And remember, at the end of the day, we're either living God's way or we're following our desires. And then when we die, what do we have? Just your deeds. There's this picture you can see right here. We're going to be six feet under the ground. And if we lived our life just following our lusts and desires, and these signs have come to us, but we've just been racing through life and we've ignored the signs. And then you've been like a person who's racked up a big bill. You've gotten into the fruit market, the supermarket, and you've just taken everything you wanted. Then you try to walk out with all these goodies. Someone's going to stop you and say, hey, you got to pay up. That's the same thing. When we die, we've enjoyed all the benefits of life, all of the things that the Creator has given us, our eyes that we see with, the heart that we love with, and our health and everything else that God has given us, all the food and all of the things from the earth. 
that He's given for us, that are subservient to us, and then we don't give back? You think that that's it? We're just going to die? And everything, we're just going to fall asleep? And then we're not going to be accountable? The same way you wouldn't be able to walk out of that store or walk too far without somebody grabbing you and bringing you back to pay that bill or else you go to jail. When we die, we're going to be accountable. And now is the time to get it right before death comes and overtakes us. Then it's too late. So God Almighty is the most merciful, most, most loving. Turn to Him sincerely and ask Him for forgiveness, for guidance, and He will facilitate a way. Start right now. And if you've already made this decision that Islam is the way of life from the Creator, calls you to nothing but goodness, now live it. And live it more during this month of Ramadan and continue to live it all throughout your life so you can be the best human being possible. And then you can achieve paradise at the end and avoid the hellfire. Tune in every week here to The Dean Show. We'll see you next time. God willing, until then, peace be with you.